We're playing some more of that discard brand from Gwentleman. Using that Wolfsbane. It's a pretty epic deck. I'm really enjoying it. I feel like this is a much more enjoyable deck to play than the previous iteration of discard brand. Uh, purely because it's less... Uh, less reliant on the whole revive mechanic and serious and things like restore and more uh, encourages more play more thought out play I guess or not not necessarily more thought out but more turn by turn play in the earlier rounds as opposed to just kind of relying on being carried by the revive mechanics in round two and three if that makes any sense so anyway so come here I immediately try and get rid of his uh, his hound I also get the skirmish out of my deck by deck thinning it which I don't actually have a lot of options to do so I mean, I do have two options. This is my third option to get rid of that skirmish out of my deck, which is really good. Also, I prevent him from being able to uh, navigator or navigator it out, which is pretty powerful. And also, because he uses the leader ability to get out initially, I know that his options to do so are pretty limited. Now, one thing I, I may make him... It's, I, I don't feel like I made the mistake, but it could be seen as a mistake. By seeing that he... Probably doesn't have any more uh, gold, but I mean, doesn't have any more frost. I could have grimaced here early, but I don't actually end up doing that. I don't, I'm not even sure I actually end up using grimace at all to clear weather in this game, which is very strange considering I'm going up against a weather Aridin or maybe like a almost controlly Aridin. So even though it's less potent. Uh, to use a whale harpooner on this nine strength uh, wild hunt rider, whatever it's called. I actually wanted, I was kind of thinking I'd pull it to the range row in hopes that he would use a second weather and then I could grimace it. I imagine this guy playing playing up against my deck knows that I have a grimace or most likely have a grimace. So he wants to make sure he doesn't overplay his weather and then get punished hard for that. Okay, so this is what, like I mentioned in the previous video, I'm not particularly acclimated to this deck yet. And I kind of make a mistake here. I overplay here. And then Wolf, Wolfsbane's going to come in and it's going to have me massively overplayed. This is not good at all. I mean, if I went second, it would have been just fine, but I didn't. I went first, so I'm going to be one card down. Now, winning against a, a Weather Aridin is. Uh, winning the first match again, or the first round against a Weather Aridin is good. Even if I am one card down, but. I still overplayed a little bit too much. I wasn't really thinking. I wasn't, you know, looking forward. I wasn't looking ahead in my own game plan. I got punished for it. If I had Dark Raid, that would have been amazing. If I had a Spy, that would have been so, so good. I really wish I had a Spy in that opportunity. That is a perfect opportunity to play a Spy. If you are if you know that Wolfsbane's going to come in for 12 strength on the, uh, on the next time it comes back around to you and you play a Spy before that happens... And you know you're going to be over that point total when that Wolfsbane comes in, no matter what you're, more or less, no matter what your opponent does, then that is, mm, that is so perfect. And that's like, that is, I believe, the prime reason why the Spy is in this deck at all, as opposed to the previous iterations where maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't in some iterations, uh, is because of that Wolfsbane synergy. Being able to play the Spy early and then still be okay because of the Wolfsbane giving you 12 strength. Oh man, I love... That's got to be my favorite new card. I think that's why I'm so in love with this deck right now is because of Wolfsbane. And it's such a... Like, both players know it's coming and it's just about the, the way you play around it. Because <laughs> it happened. It's going to happen. Uh, for the most part. Unless they pass early in which you probably take the, uh, take the round pretty easily. So I'm going to this round, pretty common tactic against uh, Weather Airden or uh, you know Weather in general, is to try and play out round two as much as possible. And whenever they play one or two Weathers, uh, like you're about to see right here, you just pass and it's as if you used a Clear Skies for free. Now I'm going to play this out a little bit more because I know, he, uh, I believe they have on average, it's three, it's three Hounds and then it's that Gold Weather guy. And then it's like Woodland Spirit, so almost like five weathers, and I've only gotten one out, and I've gotten two out. So I need him to play at least one or two more before I can safely pass this round without, or or alternatively, I just get round three down to two or three cards, and his weather is much less effective in that sense. Now again, I'm looking for a prime opportunity to use my Gremist here. I want to use Gremist to use a Clear Skies and get rid of two weathers, and then he has to play another weather or two, which will uh, pare down what his uh, his overall power. And I can do this because I won round one. Big point. 
pretty smart little strategy there to whittle this guy down so he takes the weather damage. Now, uh, it could also be said that I know that I quote unquote know that he has limited weather since the Wild Hunt Hound. He didn't have one on the previous round, but he played it in this round, which means it was on the right most of his hand, which means he drew into it, which means he probably doesn't have much else weather. He doesn't he probably doesn't have he probably doesn't have too much weather left in his hand currently, and it would have been relatively safe to use Grimace. This is a situation in which watching your opponent's plays and watching your opponent's hand like just in general watching just your opponent and the way they're particularly playing as opposed to what's usually played can be effective in determining a new strategy now i didn't do this i didn't do that this time because i'm still kind of afraid of weather like i don't want to just get use grimace on one on one just a single uh row clear and then get punished hard for that now of course if i did actually have a single row weather clear like skelica did get in the most recent patch i absolutely would have played it there but i didn't and I'm gonna. This is the the tactic I was talking about in round one that I want to try and deploy in this round. So I'm gonna pull this wild hunt uh, rider over to a different round, a, d a different row rather. So I pull into the melee row, and the idea is is I want him to use another weather here. I want him to think, oh no, my wild hunt rider has been moved. I better put another weather out to make sure to get uh take advantage of that synergy that's coming from the weather and from the effect of the rider i was trying to bait it out but he's not falling for it he's just he's playing all the cards that surround weather but not the weather itself which is really troubling because i'm losing a lot of points per i'm losing a lot of points over the course of this round trying to bait him to play that second weather and i just go for the this may be just a bit short-sighted on my part but i just go for the uh, straight up weather clear uh, slash Force him to play one more card to pass my strength advantage. Basically, this is just a convenient, safe, comfortable passing point that I just went ahead and took. And I still keep my Grimace. Because I'm actually, by this point, almost afraid that he actually has like a, a gold weather. And that's why he's being so careful about not over committing too, uh, too much. But the, that's kind of crazy. But it's just going to... This guy was scaring me. Because uh, I don't know what... Maybe it's just that he has this long Chinese name that I can't recognize. I assume that's Chinese. Uh, maybe it's because he played the, he completed the expert difficulty of the uh, vampire event. Which I did as well. Uh, or maybe it's just the fact that he was not playing his two... Uh, playing more than two weathers. One weather around was, it was just weird. It was uncomfortable. I wanted to get out of that round. And just force it to a third one. Although I, I probably should have just uh, played that round as much as possible. Until I had just like door gray and like restore or something. Get rid of the spy of course. Don't want the spy. Although it's not necessarily a terrible idea to keep the spy. But I'm going to get rid of it here nonetheless. Uh, the reason the reasoning why you may want to keep the spy is because you want to uh, elongate this round a little bit. And try and wait for a better opportunity excuse me to use a clear skies grimace or maybe to use a clear sky i mean a, a fog grimace but uh it's not particularly good so again he played i let's just rewind this just a slight bit i believe he, that's the rightmost card in his hand which means he just drew into it i'm assuming that's how it works yeah that's his rightmost card wait that doesn't make any sense though does it I know in Hearthstone that mechanic definitely exists. I'm not 100% certain if it exists in Gwent. I believe I read an article on Gwentelman the other day that says it does. That's something you should be looking out for. But I don't know if that was saying in general or if in Gwent in particular. Because I recall uh, when you play Reveal, all the cards are mixed up. Although that may just order them on draw order. Instead of uh, by point total like my hand is. I mean, or by... Uh, Bronzes, silvers, spells, and strength. I'm not sure about that. I'm going to assume that it is the case because both times he's played the Wild Hunt round, uh, Wild Hunt Hound, from the rightmost uh, position in his hand, and that, that's assuming because he he played it uh, as soon as he got it. Which, considering the way he's been playing in the previous two rounds, makes a lot of sense. He didn't. He just wasn't able to get him out of his hand. Uh, he kind of got unlucky with this draw, I guess. So he has a kind of a dead weather there on the range row. So I go ahead and play the fog because I have the whale harpooner, but I'm not like, I feel like I jumped the gun on that a little bit. I'm not saying I necessarily get punished for that in this game. That's not the whole point. Um, which is, I mean, trading, trading uh, mages there. It's not too bad, but I definitely should have gone for the 
Oh, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking, okay, this is what I was thinking. So I was thinking I was going to use the Gremis, I was going to use the Fog, and then I was going to use the Ikimara to eat the Gremis and then restore it back just in case he ever actually played more weather. That's what I was thinking. Now I remember. Because I wanted to make sure to get Gremis in the graveyard so I could uh, uh, revive it. And one thing, one thing I learned the hard way is that it actually only works on Skellige units, so you can't use it on Dora Gray. So just keep that in mind. So he does that. You can revive Door Gray though. So if you can get rid of Door Gray in some way by using like Ekimara, then you can just Sigdrifa it back. So I go for Sigdrifa into surely not Gremis, right? Do I really go into Gremis? No, no, I had to save Gremis for the other guy for restore. Huh, no, I go for it. Why didn't I just restore it? Why didn't I restore it? Because maybe I have another way to kill it. I don't actually remember. Wow, this is a weird play. Why did I do this? I don't particularly remember my reasoning on that. Because what do I have left to restore? I should have restored that. I think that was just a mistake I made. Okay, so this is where things start getting crazy. So up until this point, I've just been talking about, you know, some fairly common basic stuff like playing against uh, weather monsters and a little bit into the inside of this deck. Uh, but this is where it starts to get crazy. This is where it starts to get funny. <laughs> so he plays out an Iris. Okay, this is a fairly common. This is actually where playing Gremis to weather clear would have been effective as opposed to waiting too long. Uh, I should have I should have seen the strategy coming, but I didn't, and I'm gonna get a little bit punished for it. Okay, so I'm panicking a little bit. I don't really know how to deal with this situation. I should, man, I really should have just used Grimace to wet clear there. Yeah, that's that's a huge mistake on my part. I should use once I once I knew that his weather options were limited as a seeing as how he played in the uh, rounds one and two, and seeing as how his weather weather hunt hound. Wild Hunt Hound, <laughs> Weather Hunt Hound, uh, was played the last card of his hand. I should have known his weather options were limited, and if I can shut down his weather, even if it's less powerful or if it's less effective than usual, I still should have done it because I would have shut down any synergies like he's about to play right now. So I'm looking in my in my in my graveyard. I'm trying to look for some options here. Iris is a really tough card to play around because, like, getting twenty like. Being able to kill it is not that difficult of a task, and I'll explain this in a moment. Second, being able to kill it is not that difficult of a task, especially if your deck is built around trying to get that one condition off. And also at the same time, like it's not that easy to counter it. Like you can't just toggle the spying tag, right? You can't just toggle the spying tag because it doesn't work. Could you muzzle it? I wonder. Wait, if you could muzzle it, that'd be pretty neat, right? Muzzle is a new gold card that switches. I believe it only works on your opponent's side. Move an opponent's under strength eight card to your side. But if it could move like even an iris to your opponent's side, an opponent's iris to back to their side, and then you could kill it, that'd be really cool. So going this, I make another mistake. I uh, I use the I kind of I'm very short sighted. I use the last rate to kill off the three strength guy because I know it will kill it and it will be five less points that he gets from Iris when he eventually kills this. Instead, I should use Will Harpooner because I would have done three damage anyway. And I can save last rate for something else. I'm not sure why I didn't just use Will Harpooner there. Like, uh, just a lot of nearsighted moves in this game. Yeah. <laughs> And then he did something crazy. <laughs> also, it would have prevented this from happening. Come on. He plays Summoning Circle. Summoning Circle to freaking Iris again because he was the last person to play a card. And for some reason, he plays it on the melee road, which I don't really understand. I actually really don't get why he did that. If I were him, I would definitely would have played on the Siege. I mean, uh, this ranged. So, uh, not wanting to put my Will Harpoon on the range row. I go ahead and just use it to damage the Ekmar a little bit. Because the whole plan is to let him buff up the Drowner as much as possible and then use Coral on it. And he goes for another Iris, the one that died in my graveyard. But if I had actually revived that with Sigdrifa or something like that, I actually would have been able to use it and then kill it with uh, Whale Harpooner or Lacerate, which could have been a, way, a good way to counter his strategy a little bit. I didn't do that though. Really, I just made a lot of like poor moves, and I actually just end up getting away with it. 
So I use my restore to bring out the shield smith, and I armor up on both on both irises. Oh, this is why he did it. That's right. It was a mistake to place the iris on the different on the non uh, weather roads because he wanted to do this. He wanted to use that card to bring him to the to the range row and then kill him all at once. But because I armored them up. And because they were still at three strength each, he's not able to get it. <laughs> oh, it was brilliant. Oh, Aubrey Smith saved me the game there. If I didn't have Restore or Sig Grief at that time, I would have lost. Because he would have gotten like 25 points. Or he would have gotten 50 points. That would have been the most epic way to end this game. If he had, got, if he had gotten 50 points of killing both irises at once. That would have been incredible. So I go ahead and pass. I don't want to give... Uh, playing Coral here might have actually been okay but i don't want to risk it i know as soon as it goes over to his turn it's not going to take the weather and the game is just going to end at 40 to 43 i kind of want to do that math though so i play coral it's five strength i make this down to two strength so it's 15 but he gets 25 i actually would have lost if i had played coral there so that's a good point like no when you no when you've got the game one and then stop there the weather's not going to take one more time. And that just ends the game. Oh, that was a tricky game. That was a really, really tricky game. <laughs> but a really cool one. I would, I would, Even if I had lost that, if he had gotten 50 strength from those double irises, that triple iris, that would have been just absolutely epic. That's like a play of the month kind of situation. But even though I did play pretty short-sightedly, uh, particularly in that third round, I was still able to come back with it without, you know, not losing my head. Keeping the armor smith in the back of my mind and its armor properties uh, and its armor properties and being able to counter a strategy. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.